Today, we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into this demonstrator that I've set up and get a little deeper into what we've seen here. So this is, as before, the transmitting antenna. This consists of 25 turns of enameled copper wire with a center tap, 25 turns of enameled copper wire again, and that uh, has a center tap with what is known as a flyback oscillator that I've created over here. The flyback oscillator is going to create an alternating current in our transmitting antenna. That alternating current is going to create an alternating magnetic field that grows and subsides. And that magnetic induction is going to induce a current in our receiving antenna. So here we have the receiving antenna. The receiving antenna consists of 50 turns of enameled copper wire. At the end of each part of the electrical conductor, I've attached the croc clip, crocodile clip, and I am attaching a light emitting diode to the end. This over here is a current resistor, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that just now. So an alternating magnetic field is going to induce an alternating electric current in the electrical part and the light emitting diode or LED is going to show us when a current is being induced in our receiving antenna over here. Right, so just to look at the rest of the circuit, over here I have a laboratory type power supply. This is going to provide us with a voltage and the direct current that we need for our oscillator over here. So direct current to alternating current converter through the oscillator over here will, as I've said before, create an alternating current in our transmitting antenna. Over here, I've got a digital multimeter. The digital multimeter is going to measure the voltage, the DC voltage that's used by our oscillator over here. I use that as a check to make sure that the voltage is, uh, is okay and everything is running fine. Over here, this digital multimeter is going to show us the current, the RMS current in milliamps in this case, that's being drawn by the os oscillator. Uh, yeah, I've got two oscilloscope probes. Now, for, for you, those of you that's not familiar with an oscilloscope, that is a device that shows a waveform over time. So we're going to be able to see via the current resistor over here that's in line with our oscillator, the waveform, the current waveform that is shows the, the, the actual current that is being generated in our transmitting antenna over here and then the other probe over here is going to show us the current via this fly lead of the current that is being induced in our receiving antenna. So talking about the waveform, this is a oscilloscope pre-processing unit. The pre-processing unit is attached to the laptop over here and we're going to see the actual waveform on the laptop over here and I'll, I'll create an insert for you to see it more clearer. Right, so without further ado, let's switch on. And over there, you can actually see on the, on the laptop, you can see the waveform. That's the current waveform of the current that is generated by the oscillator in our transmitting antenna. Right, so I'm going to bring the antenna closer. However, what I've seen due to the lighting here in the, in the shack, it's not that that easy for the camera to see the light emitting diode. So I've created the shield so that you can see that more clearer as I uh, bring the antenna closer. So as I bring the antenna closer, you can quite clearly see how the light emitting diode starts emitting light, showing that a current is being induced in our electrical part of our receiving antenna. Now, here's the first law of electromagnetic radiation, or in this case, magnetic induction. Just for, for the purest, uh, what we are seeing here is not really an electromagnetic wave. This is what is known as the near field of an antenna, where it is mainly due to magnetic induction. However, this shows the principle of electromagnetic radiation, in this case, magnetic induction, quite, quite clearly. Now, here's one of the first rules. As and that's the inverse rule of distance versus current induced, 
you can see that as the distance decreases, the current increases. As the distance increases, the current decreases. There you can quite clearly see. Right, so for the next part of our demonstration, I'm going to put this cover over our transmitting antenna, just so I can have my hands free to show you the rest of the demonstration. Right, so there we are. I'm now going to attach the oscilloscope probe to our current resistor over here. So you can see the current resistor in the back here. Now I'm using this fly lead because it's not, not always that easy to, uh, to attach the probe to the uh, receiving antenna over here. Right, so there you can see quite clearly the red line shows the induced current. And again, you can see the inverse law of distance versus current induced. Increase in distance, decrease in current. As I decrease the distance, you can see the increase in current on the oscilloscope. Now, let's talk about an internal antenna versus an external antenna. You can quite clearly see that when I touch the antenna, there's some effect. You may find that people walking around it is going to have an effect on the antenna inside the building. That's one of the reasons why we want to move the antenna outside of the building. Another reason is going to be the penetration through the walls to get from outside, where the tower is located, of course, to the internal antenna. Now, what I've got here is I've got these DVDs. These DVDs have an aluminum or an aluminum surface, which is the recording surface. Now, that aluminum surface tends to attenuate an electromagnetic wave. So I'm going to use this to simulate the wall that the electromagnetic wave has to penetrate in order to get to our receiving antenna. Right, so let me show you. I'm going to, and watch clearly, I'm simply placing the brick wall, that is, between the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna. Now, watch the induced current very closely. Here you can see a significant drop in the current that's being induced from uh, the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna. Another factor that one has to contend with inside a building is reflections inside a building. So now we have an antenna that's inside the building. It has to penetrate a, a brick wall or a concrete a metal reinforced concrete slab, something like that. But metal inside the office, let's say, for instance, you have metal filing cabinets and you, and you actually place the router on top of a filing cabinet and, and there are metal around. Look what a, this is a metal tin top. The metal tin top actually reflects an electromagnetic, in this case, a magnetic wave or the magnetic induction. And I'm going to reflect the magnetic field that is induced from the transmitter to the receiver back onto the receiver. And you will see how destructive that reflected wave is in terms of the induced current in the receiver. Right. So. This is the first part of the video, so let's just quickly summarize. What do you gain by having an outside antenna? First of all, you don't have these reflections. Secondly, you gain not having to penetrate walls. Thank you for watching. This is the first part of my video. Be sure to watch the next part where I'm going to talk about polarization. I'm going to talk about modulation, and I'm going to talk about electromagnetic reflection.